Hi, I'm Jeff Farnwald, Director of the MBA Program at Rockford College. About 18 months ago, the Rockford Chamber of Commerce set out to make networking easier in Rockford by identifying area people you should know in business. Currently, 41 people have been recognized and celebrated as one of these people. This series of talks held at Rockford College was designed to provide a vehicle for the public to hear from and learn about each of the people you should know. I hope you enjoy this talk. Today, I have the privilege to introduce Jeff Farnwald. Uh, the uh, director of the MBA program at Rockford College and a 2011 People You Should Know Award recipient. In addition to directing, he is an assistant professor at both the undergraduate and graduate level. Jeff Farnwalt has worked with over 100 local and regional uh, profit, nonprofit, and government organizations as a consultant and trainer. He is extremely involved in the Rockford community, serving as vice chair of the board of the Rockford Local Development Corporation. Um, treasurer and a member of the Board of Directors for the Montessori Private Academy, and a member of many others. His talk today is titled, Asking the Right Questions at the Right Time. Please help me introduce Jeff Farnwald. Wow, nice crowd. Um, thank you all for coming today. I hope, uh, I hope the talk is, uh, is worth your time. When, uh, I, I gotta tell you, it's been very difficult to think about what to, to say with these talks. There's, um, um, come on up front. Yep. As Lauren mentioned, I've worked with a lot of different organizations and a lot of different, in, in a lot of different roles. And what I tried to do is I tried to think about what is it that I actually do, all right? Because I don't necessarily produce anything and I don't actually, uh, um, you know, um, create a lot of different things. But in all the different roles that I play, what I do is I ask a lot of questions. As a professor, I spend my time asking questions. When I work with organizations, I spend a lot of time asking questions. And the one thing that always strikes me is if you think about your educations, the one thing we never teach anybody is how to ask questions. Maybe in a philosophy course. But other than that, we really don't spend a lot of time questioning. We spend, we, we, we expect to be able to know the answers, but knowing the answers is the easy part. The hard part in many cases, in my opinion, is being able to ask the questions. And so today, what we're going to talk a little bit about is questioning. And in my mind, how you should go about asking questions and the types of questions you can ask, and maybe sometimes the type of questions that you don't want to ask. So, art of questioning. I think a lot of times when people think about questioning, they do it backwards, in my opinion. A lot of people start with the abstract and try to go to the concrete. I think you're better off when you're asking questions if you start with the concrete. Start with what you know, and then figure out what it is, where you want to go, and you'll be in much better shape. And so when, we talk, when I think about asking questions, what I start is I usually start with asking people what they know. And then I move from there. Secondly, I also make sure that I ask questions, or when you ask questions, you need to ask questions that go against the grain. In other words, too many times we ask, what if we do something? But we don't ask the question, what if we don't? And the what if we don't question may be more important than the what if we do. And so let me give you an example with that. There was a situation years ago when I was... Uh, uh, actually adopting my son and I was in Mexico and I was talking to uh, someone I was working with on the phone and he had called me up, president of a company, he called me up and he said we're not going to go after this contract and I said okay fine and he said we're not going to go after it because of this, 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 this and this and I said okay fine and I said let me ask you one question I said what if you don't go after the contract and he paused and he said well, if we don't go after the contract, then this won't happen, and then this won't happen. And then went on for about five minutes, and finally he stopped, and he said, I guess we need to go after the contract. And I said, that's not my call. It's your call. I said, all I can do is ask the question. But if you ask the question, why shouldn't we, there's all sorts of reasons. I mean, why should we? But if you ask the opposite, the contrary, sometimes you'll end up talking yourself into something. By the way, that turned out to be their biggest contract and really set their organization in a pretty good direction. You have to ask uh, questions that are relevant to the situation. Sometimes we ask the wrong questions at the time that, that a time it's not relevant. It may be an important question, but it's not relevant to what's going on at the time. And so you need to make sure the questions you're asking are relevant. 
You also have to make sure that you ask both open and closed questions at the right time. Sometimes you don't have time to get in a lot of detail. At that time, you want to ask a closed-ended question, something that someone will answer with a yes or a no. At other times, you're going to want to ask, ask an open-ended question because you want people to give you information. You know, but so many times we go around, we ask people questions, and we really need information, and they answer it with a yes or a no. And what we really need to be doing is asking questions that they can expand on. Thirdly, the questions always have to be timed right. Okay? There are times when there's times to ask questions, but there are times when people aren't receptive to giving answers. And so if you ask the question, they're not going to be receptive anyway. So your timing has to be very well in terms of the, in terms of the types of questions you're asking. And then lastly, you have to be able to challenge assumptions. If you tie all this into planning, which we'll actually be able to talk into the strategic planning, I know there's some students in here in an entrepreneurship course, if you're talking about developing a business plan, uh, I think you'll see how these slides fit in. But if you, if you don't challenge the assumptions, there's your problem. Too many times with people, what happens is you challenge what they say, and they get, they get offended. If you challenge the assumptions, you may be able to develop dialogue and come to an answer that makes more sense. Many times it's not what people are going to do that is, is right or wrong, it's the assumptions they're operating under, which may be inaccurate or right or wrong. So, for a little more detail, in my mind, where you need to start is always with what and why. What are we doing? Why are we doing it? What is this? Why is that there? That's the concrete, okay? You need to know where you're starting from. If you think about a plan, and you think about strategic planning, one of the first things you need to know is where you're at. Call it a situational analysis. Where are we at right now? Okay? And then from there, what you need to do is you need to be able to move to the where. And the where is basically your longer term. And I'm going to get into each of these in a, a more in a minute. But your where is the abstract. But if you don't know your what and why, you'll never be able to find where. And then the last two questions, again, in more detail, is you've got to be able to think about the who and the how. Because the who and the how put the detail into the what, why, and where. And so the, the, the who and the how really become your plan. So from a what, what perspective, what is the first question you really, is really the first question? What is this? What's going on? What is the most concrete thing? Even if people don't know what something is, usually they can explain it in some way. So, for instance, when, my first, when my, my, I adopted my son when he was six years old, and he came from Mexico. And he, his English skills were varied, because in Mexico, of course, he didn't speak any English. But he had an amazing ability that if I asked him what something was, even if he couldn't tell me exactly what it was, he could describe to me what it did. All right? And many times, even when we're not sure what something is in one way, we can describe or do something with it. And so the what question becomes very important. If you think about it in terms of strategic planning, what is your mission? What are we trying to accomplish? If you're thinking about it in a standpoint from being an entrepreneur, what is, what is your business idea? It's the first question you've got to ask, answer, uh, ask and answer before you can do anything else. Okay, so for example, what's this? What does it look like? It looks like something off a machine. What else? A gear of some sort, right? Something that turns. All right, you may not be able to describe specifically what it is, but you can talk about it because it's there. I, what I did, how I found this, was I actually Googled thingamabob, <laughs> and this came up. All right? But what it is, really, I also found out it's a piece off a snowmobile. Okay? Which makes sense once you see that in more detail. But you can, the what question is something you can, you can define pretty clearly, even if you don't know what something is. And the more you look at it and the more you talk about it, the more that definition becomes clear. So, some good what, what questions for people to be asking. What if you don't? What do you plan on doing? What have you done? What do you want? What results do you expect? 
usually when I start working with an organization or someone says they want me to do training or whatever, the first thing I ask is, what do you want? What do you want me to do? You know, what are you expecting to have happen because of this? If I can't answer that question, I have a very hard time from that point on being effective at all. And so that becomes really important. Secondly, why? I think that's the second question you have to ask yourself and you have to ask other people. It's mostly used in combination for what, with what. What did we do and why are we doing it? Um, it helps you define your concrete answer because it explains the purpose behind the what. And if there's not a purpose behind the what, then it's probably not going to drive someone to want to do it. And sooner or later, you're going to have to get people involved, and they're going to want to know the why. Okay? I'll never forget a lesson uh, um, that I learned uh, uh, with one of my current coworkers. One of the first days I was working with her, um, I went in and I said to her, I need you to do this for me. I explained what I needed to do. And she looked at me and she said, we're going to get along much better if you explain why we do something in a, in expl in, instead of just telling me what, because I need to know why. All right? I think most people need to know why. And so we forget that sometimes. We get so busy in the what and then we move to the where that we don't do the why. And we need to make sure that we explain to people the why as we go. So again, if you tie this into other sorts of things, let's say Six Sigma, one of the things they always talk about in Six Sigma, one of, the one of the tools they use in order to get it an answer, to dive down and get an answer, is they call it the five whys. You ask why and you get an answer. You ask why again and you get an answer. And by the fifth time, by the final fifth why, you're probably going to have something that's pretty concrete, okay? That's going to help you define the what more. Too many times we ask why once and we're satisfied with the first why. But if we asked in more detail, we'd actually start uh, understanding more about what it is that we're trying to accomplish. So after that, then we have to move to the where, okay? Where is the most abstract? I think where is the most difficult? You know, as I, growing up, people always say, where do you want to be when you grow up? Well, I still haven't grown up yet, so I haven't figured out where I want to be. You know, and that's always the hard question to ask. But it is the vision. If you tie it back to planning, it's the vision. It's the where are we going, where, where is it that we really see ourselves, okay? It needs to be connected to a what and a why. Because a vision is just a dream if it's not tied to something. And so it has to be tied back on the other end. I think it's the most difficult to answer in most questions, in most cases. And it's also, in my opinion, always ends up being life's biggest questions. So for example, how many of you ever seen a shoe on the side of the road or in the middle of the road? All right, where does that come from? All right, how do you get one shoe in the middle of the road and where's the other shoe? Where's the person walking around in one shoe? Okay, it's almost an unanswerable question. You never see two, you see one. Another one, this just happened to me this weekend. I did laundry. I put two socks in the washer. I swear I put them in the dryer, one came out. Where did the other sock go? It's one of those questions again that you just don't know how to answer, okay? And probably more importantly, good where questions. Where are we going? Where do you see yourself? Where do you not want to be? And I think this one is a really important question to think about. Where do you not want to be? I hear so many people talk about where they want to be, but you don't ask people what they don't want to be and where they don't want to be. And that becomes really important because that helps you define much of what you're doing, especially in planning. Where do we want to go? Where do we not want to go? And then from there, oops, went too fast. The thing is, the problem is, is where's may lead to more what's and why's. Because where you want to go this way, then you may have to say, well, why do we want to do this and what are we trying to do again? And so it becomes very circular in terms of, in terms of what you're doing. Then the how and the who. The how and the who help you see multiple paths. As you start saying, how could we do this? You could do it this way, this way, this way, or this way. There's many different hows out there. And so now you get to open up, your, uh, open up your vision again and see many different paths. 
Okay? Again, if you're an entrepreneur and you've got an idea, this is what we want to do, this is where we want to go, but the hard part is the how. How are we going to get there? The how question is also probably the most, uh, the how and the where, uh, the, 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 the who and the how are also the ones that become the most personal. Because if you're delegating or working with people along the way, those are the ones that, that people are, that, that all of a sudden turns into people's jobs. Who's going to do it? How are they going to get it done? So it is your plan. And if you think about developing a strategic plan, developing a business plan, developing a project plan, whatever, that's where you're at. It's the how and the who. And so examples of some how-who questions that go together. Who wants this? How will we meet their needs? Again, if you're thinking about starting a business or you've got a product out there, who wants my product? How am I going to meet their needs? Secondly, who's responsible for this? So if you've got something done, you ever go to meetings and everybody walks out of the meeting, you go back to the next meeting and, no one, and everybody thinks someone else is supposed to do something? Because no one really answered the who's going to be responsible question? For many people, the most important question, how much will it cost? Right? I see people every day who want to come and take the MBA program. Sooner or later down the line, they're going to ask me, how much is this going to cost? All right? Because they want to know what they're, what, what they're going to have to invest in order to get a certain type of return. And then lastly, who else could do this and how are we better? This is really your marketing in some respects in a, in a nutshell. Because a lot of times people talk about why their, why their product is good and they say, oh, we're better than anybody else or we don't have any competition. And I always kind of wonder about that because if someone else is in business, then guess what? They must be good at it somehow. And you better be able to answer the question, how are we better? Because that's going to be extremely important for you. All right, so I think, as, I think great leaders really do ask great questions. I think it's one of the talents that people have a lot of times, to be able to sit down and to be able to cut through everything and ask really good questions. And again, I think that they need to be well-timed. You know, there are some people who sit at a meeting and they're, they're wonderful to watch. They'll be at a meeting for a half hour, never say a word. And then all of a sudden, they'll ask that perfect question at the right time that brings everything into focus and that really moves, that, uh, moves the meaning of the organization forward. Secondly, you need to be able to force people to think, even if they don't want to. And questioning forces people to think. I always tell my students in my classes, you all should ask each other questions, because if you don't, I will. And my questions will probably be harder. All right? But I want the students to ask questions because that's what's going to be important. You can always hire someone to answer the question. What you want to do is get someone to ask the questions. And lastly, you need to be able to create a framework with those questions. If the questions are all over the place and they aren't focused, then there's not a framework. You need to empower other people to find the answers. When we, started, when we start, first started thought, thought about thinking about doing these talks, I, asked the question, I, I thought this would be good. What? We should do these talks. Okay? But then I empowered other people to find the answers to how we should go about doing this. Because that's where the work takes place, and that's where it really makes sense. However, there are some scary parts of asking questions. Number one, uh, don't, uh, don't uh, you don't know the questions to ask. I think that's the worst thing you can ever be in, is when you're in a situation that you don't know what questions to even ask. You know, I've heard students tell me, to me sometimes, I'm so lost, I don't even know what to ask you. All right? That's a problem. It's a problem I haven't, I haven't been clear enough along the way, but it's a problem for a lot of people in that we just don't know what question to ask because we haven't really thought about or trained ourselves into asking questions. Um, we, uh, we may not know the answers. If you're in an organization and you're, you're a president or CEO and you're asking a lot of questions and everybody looks at you blankly, gives you that deer in the headlight look, that's scary also because you're finding out that the people you're, you're expecting to have answers don't have them. And you hope that over time they get them, but it can be really scary when people don't know what they're going to do next. Okay? The questions may lead to more questions. In many cases, you ask a question, what it's going to lead to is another question. Again, those five whys. And so some people don't like to ask a question because all they really want is an answer. And so they don't want to ask a question because it just leads to another question. 
Sometimes it's easier to know, it, it, it's easier to, uh, to, know, uh, to not know what you don't know. Okay? Anybody who's ever raised children, you don't want to ask kids questions sometimes because they'll tell you stuff you really don't want to know. Those of you who are students in here, you know there's things you wouldn't want your parents to ask you, right? And that you wouldn't want to share with them. Okay? Sometimes there are things that it's better left unknown. Okay? Um, others may not like being asked questions. All right? I know of another person, I helped him with his business plan, and he started his, uh, he started his business, runs a successful restaurant in town. He'd come to me with his business plan, and I'd come back to him with all sorts of questions, and he'd hate me for it. I mean, he would really be angry. But that was what he wanted me to do, was to ask all the questions that he didn't have answered, because if he was going to go into business, he needed to have those answers. And I think a lot of times, though, that people really do get bothered by, those, by, by asking those questions. And then lastly, you may not always like the answers you get. If you ask a question, someone may give you an answer. And you may not like the answer you get. I'm always amazed that businesses will go out and they'll survey their customers and they'll survey their employees and then they get answers and they're not happy with them. Well, then why'd you ask? All right? If you don't want to know, don't ask. Okay? So again, if you don't want to know, don't ask. You have to be sincere in your desire to know. You should, you should avoid, though, fishing for compliments in the sorts of things you do. So, for example, and I need to explain this a little bit. When I was working in industry 10 or 15 years ago, we set a challenge up for our employees at the company. And we said, if you can raise $20,000 for United Way, which was a good sum of money for that company, we'll take on whatever challenges you want us as senior managers to do. This was the result. <laughs> and I asked people all day how I looked. I asked people to take me to lunch. No one would do it. All right? Don't ask if you want, don't want. I really thought I looked good. Um, the challenge was that I, that I had to dress up like Pamela Anderson, sit at the front desk, this is as close as I could get, and greet all the customers' employees all day. But for $20,000 for United Way, it seemed like a pretty good deal. But I don't know. I thought I was hot. Um, so in conclusion, the right questions at the wrong time are the wrong questions. Uh, 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 the, the right questions at the wrong time are the wrong questions. Too many times we ask a question, but it's just not at the right time. Someone isn't ready to do it. They're rushed. There's other things going on. It's the wrong question. The wrong question at the right time just leads to confusion. If you're asking a question and people need to ask the questions, but you ask questions in a totally different direction, it can really just confuse things and mess things up. The right question at the right time takes a lot of thought. It's not something that all of a sudden you're going to be able to do. You need to really think about what you're doing. And you need to, be re you need to engage your mind before you engage your mouth. And the right questions at the right time can lead to dialogue and answers. And if you're leading an organization, you're working in an organization, what most organizations lead, need are dialogue and answers. And the right questions can help you do that. Any questions? Yes.